Hello everybody, welcome back to Ms. McGuire online video lecture and today we're covering the second part of gene mutations. Um, so please watch the first video recording um, to cover the beginning of this PowerPoint and we stopped on slide uh, 25, right? So we're gonna talk about types of mutations. So mutations can be classified in several ways by whether they remove, alter, or add function. Remember, we talk about it in the first lecture. We have gain of function mutation or lose of function mutation. But mutation can also be classified by exactly how they structurally alter DNA. So how they structurally change your DNA. The same single gene disease can result from different types of mutations. So if you have a gene in your DNA, right? And this gene, if this gene codes for specific protein, right? If we do not have this protein, um, that it can cause a disease. Now, different mutations within the same gene can uh, cause the same disease. Um, so here's the analogy of um, how different type of mutation alter DNA structure. Um, you remember that when DNA is uh, transcribed to messenger RNA, right? So DNA is inside your nucleus. Um, ribosomes making proteins outside the nucleus. So they are in the cytoplasm, right? So to get instruction from DNA to ribosomes, we need to make copy of a gene. This is called transcription. So when we transcribe a gene, we make messenger RNA. And messenger RNA is read by ribosomes by triplets. So three nucleotides, are read together. So each three nucleotides code for one amino acid, right? But here they give you analogy of a sentence and each letter is made of three, uh, I mean, sorry, each word is made of three letters, right? So look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. Each word is made of three letters. So this is analogy how ribosomes read information in messenger RNA. So messenger RNA has lots of information. All these instructions of protein synthesis, but all those messages are read in words of three letters, right? So if see if we have a sentence, for example, the one big fly had one red eye. And now you start making changes to this code. Um, and by the way you make these changes, you, you end up with different type of mutations. So Meesens mutation, for example, um, when one letter is replaced by another one, right? So uh, now we have the Q, right? Though you don't understand. So this is the, this is the wrong, uh, this is the wrong uh, triplet and it will result possibly in a wrong amino acid, but the rest of the information is not changed, right? So Meesens is when you replace a one nucleotide with a different nucleotide. Now nonsense, when you put a stop codon over here. So now ribosomes only read up to the stop codon and that's it. So we, we don't synthesize complete protein. A uh, frame shift mutation, uh, when one letter is inserted. So you see over here, we inserted extra letter Q. And because information is read in three letter words, now we have a, a reading frame shift. So now nothing after this mutation makes sense. Now deletion can be different. If you just delete one letter, the same as you inserted one letter, if you delete one letter, you will have frame shift as well. But if you delete the whole triplet, then you're only missing one amino acid and the rest information is uh, preserved. Insertion, um, 
if we again if we insert one letter it will be a frame shift if we insert the whole uh, the whole three letter codon then we just alter uh, protein uh, slightly right so we just have extra letter but the rest of information is still present um, another type of mutation is duplication when we have uh, one triplet duplicated so now we end up with one big fly fly had one red eye and um, in expanding mutations through the generation we can uh, uh, add more and more repeats uh, making the uh, gene longer as a, as a result, we alter the protein. Right, so, um, so this was analogy. And now we will look at different type of mutations in more details. So here's our point mutation. Now point mutation tells you that we uh, change DNA in one single spot. It's a change in a single DNA base. Um, and we have two types of point mutation, transition and transversion. Um, remember, um, let, me, let me draw instead of have my disappearing pen. Remember the DNA is made of um, nucleotides, right? So the DNA can be, for example, C, uh, G, T, A, then maybe C again, T again, and then we have another complementary uh, string. C appears with G, G with C, uh, T with A, A with T, C with G, and T with A, right? So here we have our double-stranded DNA. And um, if you look A and G, they are pure rings. So they're made of double rings. And cytosine and thymine, they are pyrimidines. So they're made of one single ring over here. Oops, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, right, so now um, when you substitute purine with a purine, so you substitute A with G or G with A, or you substitute C with T or T with C, then it's transition. So purine replaces purine or pyrimidine replaces pyrimidine. However, if purine replaces pyrimidine or pyrimidine replaces purine, it's called transversion. So now instead of um, nucleotide base with a single ring, you have nucleotide base with double ring, then it's transversion. So that's the difference between these point mutations. Now, consequences of point mutations. It can be missense mutation, as we already said, when we replace one amino acid with another amino acid. Nonsense mutations, changes codon for amino acid into a stop codon. So instead of amino acids that we would, you know, use to build longer protein, now we have stop codon and we stop protein synthesis. It creates proteins that are often non-functional. Cells have a response to shortened proteins called a nonsense mediated decay. A stop codon that is changed to a coding codon make proteins longer, right? So, um, so again, if we replace one amino acid with another amino acid, will be missing mutations. If you put a stop codon, then it will be nonsense mutation and proteins can be shorter. Or if we're supposed to have stop codon, but we replace it with a codon that codes for amino acids and proteins get longer. And of course, um, thankfully, your cells can destroy those short proteins because why do you need uh, to accumulate proteins that are not functioning? So that's what's called uh, nonsense mediated decay when your cells get rid and recycle the proteins that are short and non functioning. Right? So here we can look uh, at the um, 
and you know different type of uh, mutation. So they start. We start with DNA. So here's our codon AAG. Remember, we need to make a copy of this codon, but we cannot. Um, uh, so we're gonna make a messenger RNA. Um, okay, I don't know why it's oh because yeah because this is where you make a copy. TTC, so you take this part, right? Because that's our um, coding string. So you take TTC and T pairs with E, T pairs with E, C pairs with G. So here's your anticodon on the messenger RNA and AAG code for lysine. Now, if you have mutation, point mutation in DNA, right? So you have, instead of G, you have A, A pairs with T. So now you need to, um, you need to make copy of this TTT. It's called transcription. So you need to transcribe. So instead of AAG, you get AAA and Think, uh, you know, and surprisingly, right, oh, good for this organism, AAG and AAA both code for lysine. So even with mutation within DNA, protein is not changed, right? So we still have the same amino acid. So that's our uh, silent mutation. Um, however, if you have a point mutation in a different nucleotide, here you have TAG, so it's ATC, a coding strand. So you have UAG now instead of AAG, and this is stop codon. That is nonsense mutation. And uh, here we have our missense mutations when we substitute with the different amino acids, right? Because again, because of the mutation in the DNA that you copy this mutation and uh, use a different amino acid to make proteins. Now, conservative and non-conservative just means you see how this um, side chain of um, lysine and uh, new amino acid is the same, then it's conservative. But if we have um, kind of like a different a pro a amino acid with completely different properties, for example, this is a polar um, amino acid, then it's called non-conservative. Um, splice site mutation. They alter a site where intron is normally removed from messenger RNA. So please, please recall that before making a um, functional or mature messenger RNA, we make pre-mRNA. And pre-mRNA has a parts called introns. And introns need to be cut out or spliced of the messenger RNA, so we, we don't want introns. However, um, if mutation happens where we have this intron part, you would think like, no, okay, we need to cut it off anyway, so it doesn't matter if we have mutation or not. However, it still can affect phenotype if intron is translated into amino acid. An example is a cystic fibrosis, one of the cystic fibrosis mutations. Or when exon is skipped, and phenomenon is called exon skipping. An example is familiar dysautonomia that affects the development and survival of certain nerve cells. Um, so here this diagram shows you that this is our pre-messenger RNA. We have exon introns, exon introns, and introns need to be spliced out. But in this situation, uh, uh, splice site mutation retains in intron two, right? So we um, uh, uh, we actually um, uh, we uh, uh, in this intron is called for amino acid, and protein get longer. And in this situation, uh, splice site mutation. Um, so you uh, splice. So you um, so for example you need to cut off introns, right? So you cut off, need to cut off this, cut off this, cut off that. In this situation, you skip this, right? Um, you made a cut over here, for example. You just cut off exon instead of intron, or you can cut off intron and exon. 
um, right? So if a cut is not made um, where it's supposed to, so if a cut is made over here, for example, and you keep this intron or part of the intron that codes for amino acids, then your protein is gonna be longer. If you cut intron and cut off exons, splice site mutations skip this exon, then it will be a shorter protein. Um, deletion and insertion mutation. Genetic code is read in triplets. Nucleotide changes not in uh, multiples of three lead to disruption of the reading frame. So remember how we read um, genetic code and genetic code is a code of messenger RNA, right? So we read it by triplets. So for example, if we have deletion of one nucleotide or two nucleotide, then we have a frame shift mutation. But if we have deletion of entire three nucleotides, then uh, it will not lead to uh, disruption of reading frame. Right, so again, if we delete um, not a triplet, but for example, one nucleotide, that will cause frame shift mutation and it will alter amino acid after mutations. Nucleotide changes in multiple of trees, uh, three will not cause a frame shift, but they can still alter the phenotype. So let me go back and just show you um, this example here where we have this frame shift mutation. So here's our frame shift mutation. When what we did, we added one extra nucleotide, or you can delete uh, one, uh, one nucleotide. So if you delete one nucleotide, for example, if you delete this letter B, then you uh, after this mutation, you still will read by uh, three. So you deleted the B, but you still read uh, by three nucleotides. So your next word gonna be I, G, F, that really doesn't make sense. The next letter gonna be, again, made of three, L, Y, H. So no way it's a big fly, right? It's I, G, F, L, Y, H. So that's what our frame shift mutation is. So here you have insertion of one extra nucleotide, or you can have deletion of one nucleotide. But because you always, uh, ribosomes always need to read by triplets, then when we shift this reading frame. However, if we delete or insert um, of the nucleotide, uh, of the um, three nucleotides, right, three nucleotides, then we don't shift the frame, a reading frame, because we just, we just continue to read by three, one big fly, and then you added some new amino acid, wet, and then had one red eye. So you did not change the information after the mutation. But mutation itself and this insertion of deletion of triplet can still alter um, the phenotype. Right? That's, what, that's what it says over here. Deletion removes genetic material. For example, um, so another type of mutation over here, deletion and insertion. A deletion removes genetic material. Uh, one example is male infertility, tiny deletion on chromosome Y. Insertion adds genetic material. Um, Gaucher disease, for example. Um, so when we add genetic material and then um, this will cause the buildup of fatty substances in certain organs, particularly in spleen and liver. And this causes organs to enlarge and can affect their function. Uh, it's only insertion of one base, but it causes um, this pretty severe genetic condition. I wanted to add uh, pictures of uh, Gaucher disease, but they're really so uh, bizarre that I, I don't even want to include them in my PowerPoint. But you can search online for this disease and see how just the insertion of one base affect uh, phenotypes so drastically. Um, different mutation in, the one, in a gene can cause the same disease. Uh, for example, familia hypercholesterol, uh, 
cholesterolemia. Now, hyper means a lot. Cholesterol is your uh, fat, right? So it's a, cholesterol is a steroid. And um, it's, a, it's a lipid. So it's a part of, uh, it's in a group of lipids. And lemia means in blood. So it's a high cholesterol level in blood. And familiar means you're gonna, it's an inherited disorder. Um, and uh, so we might have a different mutations. So here's our normal protein, right? That is a receptor for cholesterol. So when cholesterol attaches to its receptor and if receptor function properly, uh, you take cholesterol inside the liver cells and then you recycle it. If not, your cholesterol is gonna stay in your bloodstream and it will cause this hypercholesterolemia. Now, here's the Meesens mutation when we replace uh, one amino acid with a different amino acid, but it changes the shape of protein enough for, for it not to function properly. So it cannot take cholesterol in. Or we, uh, in, in the second example, the stop codon was added and you see how short this protein is. So obviously this receptor not gonna be activated and cannot take cholesterol inside the cell. Now here's a frame shift mutation, insertion of four bases. So we inserted four bases and it's changed completely the uh, protein and changed the polarity. Um, so now it's look, it's a straight protein that is not gonna function again. So when you have cholesterol in blood, you cannot uh, remove cholesterol from blood, take it to your liver cells and recycle or you know uh, store it over there, uh, right? And that's all because of this receptor proteins now are not functioning and they do not function because each one has a mutation. It doesn't mean the person will have all three mutations, right? So some people will have missense mutation, some might have nonsense mutation, some might have frame shape mutation, but the result will be similar. It will be high cholesterol level in blood. Uh, pseudogenes, how pseudogenes can affect uh, mutations. Now, what is pseudogene? It's a DNA sequence gene. So it's a gene that has a DNA sequence similar to a gene, but it's not translated. That means if you cannot um, translate it, you cannot make proteins. So you have a gene, but it's not working. You cannot make proteins. Um, pseudogene may have evolved from original gene by duplication and acquired mutation. Now, when we have crossing over between pseudogene and functional gene that can disrupt gene expression. Now, why would we have this crossing over? Well, we have crossing over during gamete formation. So for example, you have a parent or someone have a parent and this parent has a pseudogene and this, and this parent is making sperm or egg. And, you know, soon they will have a baby. Now, during process of meiosis, those parents' uh, genes, uh, their chromosomes will line up and they will exchange some genetic material between homologous chromosomes. And if we line up genes incorrectly, if a normal gene get some material from pseudogene, then that can affect the expression of this gene and it co can cause genetic disorder. So some uh, cases of Gaucher disease result from crossover between the working gene that encodes for enzyme glucocerebrosidase and its pseudogene which is 96% similar in sequence and located 16,000 bases away. So, so we have a normal gene that code for this enzyme. And this enzyme is supposed to uh, break down extra fat. Right? So you don't want an extra fat deposited in your liver, in your you know, muscles, in your bones. So good that you have this enzyme that get rid of extra fat. But people also have pseudogenes that located pretty close to a normal gene. And if 
part of the pseudo gene going to be transferred to a working gene, then it can cause a uh, disease. So we'll see how, how it works. So here's our um, working gene, right, over here. And then we have some space um, and a pseudo gene. Now, pseudo gene is a shorter. It has 55 base pair deletion. So 55 base pairs was deleted, so now it's not working. But you see how one chromosome and a second chromosome, how they line up incorrectly, that normal gene line up next to pseudo gene and exchange. It's, it's supposed to, it's supposed to line up with a normal gene, right? But it's line up with a defected a mutated gene, and it's a switch uh, segments through crossing over, right? So over here, we have a Gaucher disease when we have um, um, now the gene, right, that has normal part and mutated part, right? Or over here, we can have um, some partially duplicated allele, um, right? So if you, if you imagine if you switch, um, so you cut here, and all this part uh, attaches to one chromosome and this part attaches to another chromosome. So you can see how we alter the gene, right? So here's, um, this is a gene that look like instead of just normal like that, or we can have, uh, let's say normal gene, pseudo gene, it's how it's supposed to be. And then we have partially duplicated allele over here, partially duplicated gene that has parts of functioning and uh, non-functioning genes, All right? But when, when you have those changes in the DNA, you, you would expect changes in the phenotype. And unfortunately, many of these um, alterations and changes are really devastating and they cause severe genetic conditions and uh, early deaths of patients. Another way we can have mutations because we have transposons. Now, what are transposons? They are jumping genes. They can alter gene function in several ways. So they jump from one side of chromosome to another side of chromosomes. So they can disturb the side they jump from. They can uh, shut off transcription of the gene they jump into. And they can alter the reading frame if they are not a multiple of three bases. One example of um, diseases, genetic diseases called by those jumping genes are hemophilia A. Transposome jumped from chromosome 21 to chromosome 10, and it's affected the synthesis of factor 8. And because the person doesn't have this factor 8, it doesn't allow blood to clot, and it's called hemophilia. Um, okay, so we also have factors that lessen the effect of mutation. So not all mutation will be, uh, will result in change in phenotype. We have silent mutations. They do not alter the coded amino acid. So for example, if we have mutation from CAA to CAG, we're going to change DNA because DNA is supposed to be CAA. Now it's CAG. However, it's not going to change protein sequences. CAA and CAG both code for glutam uh, glutamine. So that means we will have the same amino acid. It will not affect protein. So that's what silent mutation is. And those... Um, uh, uh, those codons are called synonymous codons. Okay, so we talk about different mutations that can alter your DNA. So if you change your DNA, uh, you will change the genetic code of messenger RNA because you make messenger RNA from your DNA. If your messenger RNA now is uh, mutated, if it's uh, not uh, normal, then you make abnormal proteins, right? So, but fortunately, DNA replication is very accurate. Only one in 100 million or so bases is incorrectly incorporated. Errors in DNA replication or damage to DNA can create mutation. And, that may, and it may result in genetic conditions and even in cancer. 
Most errors and damage are repaired, however. So we have very low um, uh, errors, right? One in 100 million uh, bases, right? So very low rate of um, mistakes. And even those mistakes, even those errors can be uh, repaired. There is two type of repair um, that exist. Um, and we're gonna discuss those repairs in a minute. Um, now, what type of repair gonna happen uh, depends on the type of damage of or error and organism vary in their ability to repair DNA. So not all organisms are as great as others. So in many modern species, DNA repair mechanism check the genetic material for mismatch based pair. And two type of um, repair include excision and mismatch repair. So let's see how it works. So excision repair. Um, so when we make an um, error replicating DNA, it might form what is called pyrimidine dimers. Um, now we need this pyrimidine dimers will affect uh, um, transcription and as a result translation of DNA. So we will make a non-functioning protein or we can make non-functioning protein and we don't want it. Now humans have two types of excision repair, nucleotide excision and base excision. And the difference is nucleotide incision, you replace up to 30 bases and base incision, you replace a smaller number, one to five bases. Uh, base excision repair is specific to oxidative damage. Um, and um, nucleotide incision uh, corrects mutation caused by different insults. Uh, right, so this is specific to oxidative damage and uh, nucleotide excision repair uh, corrects mutation by different causes, right? So let's see how it uh, works on a diagram. So here we have a DNA, right, double helix. Um, for example, we have UV radiation and it causes um, change in the structure of DNA. So it's formed this thymine uh, dimer. So it's a DNA damage. Uh, repair enzymes will arrive they will remove this incorrect sequence, right? So here we have removed this dimer. Then RNA polymerase, and RNA polymerase may, means this is enzyme that make DNA. It will create new sequence, correct sequence, right? So here's shown here in blue, um, DNA polymerase made the correct sequence, and then DNA ligase, and li ligase is like a glue, that seals sugar phosphate backbone. And here you have it. We repaired the DNA from UV damaged, right? So we, we removed the dimer and this dimer was a pretty big one, right? That's why it's excision uh, repair. Right, so next, mismatch repair. Enzymes check newly replicated DNA small loops that emerge from a double helix. Um, so those, um, if we have incorrect base, then it, it will be um, excised, so they're removed and replaced. And then we will have proof, then we will read, proofread the uh, DNA for mismatched. Now this, um, mismatch in a nucleotide is caused by nucleotides that do not uh, do not base pair correctly. Well, to understand it, let's look at the diagram again. So here we have a DNA, right? And remember DNA is double helix and we always pair, base pair nucleotide C with G, G with C, C with G, G with T, uh, A with T, and T with A, right? So that's our base pairing rule. So that's our correct DNA sequence. All right, so now what if we make a copy of the DNA? So here's our um, parental DNA and we made a copy. And instead of A, the G was added here, 
Now, when we put the mismatch base pair, it will create the bulge, a little bubble over here. All right, then enzymes um, will detect the mismatch. They will remove mismatch G and replace it with A. So correct sequence restored and DNA replication continues, right? So here we are replacing one nucleotide. So process pretty much is um, kind of similar, right? So in both um, examples, we cut off the part of DNA that mismatch, and then we replace it with the correct sequence. Only when we're talking about excision repair, we remove a large part of DNA. When we talk about mismatch repair, we just remove one or two or, you know, just few nucleotides, one to five nucleotides. Failure to repair DNA. So we said that uh, mistakes happen, those errors happen not very often, they're pretty rare. Plus, we have mechanism to repair the uh, mismatch, right? So if you made if you made a wrong copy of DNA, good is that you have mechanism to fix it. However, sometimes that mechanism fails. If both copies of repair gene are mutant, disorder can result. Um, so we have a special protein. It's called P53 protein that monitors repair of DNA. If damage is too severe, the P53 protein promotes programmed cell death or apoptosis. So, um, so your cells replicate DNA if they need to divide. So if your cells need to divide, first they replicate DNA. They try to do their job correctly. They start to replicate DNA without any arrows. However, errors happen, not very often, but they happen. Uh, if error happen, you try to uh, fix it. If you cannot fix it and damage to DNA is severe, then you have another mechanism that protects you, that protein P53. So if damage is severe, then it will start process of destroying your cells with damaged DNA. So you wanna, Kill your own cell. You want to kill one or two or few cells that have damaged DNA instead of letting them to replicate, divide, and spread this mutation through the large number of cells. That's what tumor is, right? So that's protein 53 will promote apoptosis. Um, however, um, if... Um, for example, if you have this mutation that uh, in a gene that code for P53 protein, then you don't have this protein. So you cannot uh, destroy a uh, damaged cells. All right, so that's what it says. Mutation in repair genes greatly increase susceptibility to certain types of cancer following exposure of mutagens. Um, right, so... Um, so the, just to um, kind of summarize it, if you cannot repair the damaged DNA, then you won't destroy entire cell. And to destroy the cell, you need several proteins to do it. But those proteins are also coded by genes. So if you have mutation in the genes that code for repair proteins, then we're pretty much in trouble. Right now, we don't have proper proteins to destroy the cells and those cells with uh, uh, mutant DNA can start dividing, cause uh, different type of cancers, for example. Um, so here's a DNA repair disorder. So when we cannot repair DNA, we have disorders. A DNA repair disorders include a form of inherited colon cancer, hereditary non uh, uh, non Polyposis, so we, we don't form polyps. Non polyposis colon cancer is a group of uh, seven disorders, also known as Lynch syndrome. It's affect one of 200 individuals and accounts for 3% of newly diagnosed 
uh, colorectal cancers. And it's a defect in mismatch repair of a certain gene called HNPCC on the chromosome two. I, I, um, so that's just example uh, of, uh, you know, of disorder that can be developed and the person can uh, have this disease if it failed to repair DNA, right? Okay, so that's it. This is the last slide for this chapter. So let me remind you that we were talking about uh, gene mutations um, and um, we explain um, how gene mutation works, what type of mutation exists. Also, we mentioned that uh, mutations are not, I mean, mutations of, um, mutation happens when you alter your DNA, right? How do you alter your DNA? You can alter it by exposing it to different chemicals, for example, UV radiation, or mutation can happen during replication of DNA. So when we make a copy of DNA, something went wrong and we made a wrong copy, not identical, right? And fortunately, it's not very common, um, uh, those mistakes in DNA replication. Plus we have mechanism to um, fix um, those errors. And if we cannot fix those errors, we have proteins that help us to get rid of the cells that carry uh, mutant DNA, damaged DNA, and if that doesn't work, right, then a person uh, might develop a disease such as some type of cancer, right? Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope it was helpful.